One of the biggest lies that we push onto young people in America is that they need to have really good credit in order to be able to function as an adult in the world, whether it is buying a car or leasing a car or leasing an apartment or later on buying a home, even though rent in America and mortgages are getting so out of hand that it's becoming impossible for most anyone to be able to afford to buy a home, but that's a separate video. We push this notion onto young people that they need to have a good credit score to be able to function in the world. And the best way to do that is to have one or multiple credit cards and build your credit. You hear that phrase all the time. And we push this notion onto young people without even teaching them how the credit system really even works. I know me personally, even though I was in college quite a while ago, I still went to business school in Silicon Valley at a very prestigious university. And while we went over finance and accounting and economics and all the things, we never really delved into the actual credit card system, which I think is kind of asinine. And certainly for high school and middle schoolers, as they're coming on the crux of adulthood, they should absolutely be taught this very simple, basic information, but they're not. It's left out for very specific reasons. The credit card companies don't really want you to know how this system works. And while they come off as altruistic and they're to help you because they offer really enticing things like points for the amount of money you spend. Oh, I got a free plane ticket or I get free grass or free groceries. That sounds nice, but at the end of the day, these companies, you must remember, are not there to really help you. They are there to make money. They are there to be a business. And credit card companies do not want you to be able to just do your thing and build your credit and move on in life. They want to keep you in debt. That is how they make their money. So I'm going to go over today some myths around the credit card system and sort of bust the idea that you absolutely have one have to have one to be able to do things in life because spoiler alert I'm about to turn 40 in a couple weeks and I have never had a credit card and there is no amount of arm twisting or point dangling you could put in front of me to or other incentives that would convince me that to get one because I'm absolutely against the system and I have no interest in having one and I can tell you that actually I've been able to function just fine in life ha not having a credit card and actually now at this point having no credit score. So I'm going to unpack that today, what that actually means and how I navigate around that. So let's go. Starting with an explanation of what a credit score actually is. We're told it's just this thing that means you're good with money. Having a high credit score means you're doing well in life, right? Well, no, actually not really. This is what a high credit score is. The more debt you have, as it increases and increases, as long as you are paying the minimum monthly payments, then you will have a high credit score. As you grow your debt from maybe say 5K to 10K to some people even have six figures of debt, as long as you are making all of your minimum monthly payments on time for that credit, you are have going to have an excellent credit score. Bad credit, conversely, is say you have a lot of debt, but you're missing and late on your payments all the time and not managing them, then that is absolutely going to bring your credit down to a low score, which is not something I advocate. I advocate a zero credit score. So a lot of people haven't heard of this, but a zero credit score is not the same as a bad credit score. And it's actually not the same as having no credit history. What a zero credit score means is you are debt free. And that is how I've operated in for the past, I believe I paid off my last student loan in 2017. So it's been about seven years now that I have been absolutely debt free and have consequently no credit score because what a credit score is, it's actually a debt score. It's how much debt can you grow and can you pay your minimum minimum monthly payments? Yes. Okay. Then here's your great high credit score. Because again, the credit card companies want you to have a lot of debt because you are paying interest on that debt and then therefore they are making money. So they are really not there to help you. And if you think about it for a second, that needing to have higher and higher debt in order to grow your credit score, does that actually mean you're good with money? Does that mean you're financially secure and sound and stable? No, it doesn't. It means you can scrape by and bank your, make your mon minimum monthly payments. But if you are, say, 20K, 30K, 100K in debt, 
you don't have money. When you think about that for a second, you may say, oh, but I have 5K in savings. Well, you're 100K in debt, so you're actually still really in the hole. And maybe you're making your minimum monthly payments, but you still are that negative amount of money. You don't actually have money. So if you have a high credit score, this has nothing to do with financial security or stability or being well off. So it's kind of a scam in that regard. And people don't really think about that because they just get on this train of, oh, I need to build my credit, build my credit. But in the process, they're just accumulating debt. And I do not think that's a good thing. I don't think that's a healthy way to live. It is dangerous for a lot of people. Sure, there are outliers out there that say, yep, I just, I've got eight credit cards and I'm racking up my points and paying everything on time. And sure, yes, those people exist. But for me personally, I wouldn't want the stress of my money being in all those places. I don't wanna see credit card statements every month. And I don't want the underlying temptation to buy things I don't need. Although oftentimes when people are racking up these points, they have that churning in the back of my mind of, oh, if I, but if I buy this on my credit card, it'll give me points. But they don't look at buying that thing to give them that points is actually just buying something oftentimes that they don't need. But moving back into just the whole premise of the credit score, let me reiterate that having a high credit score does not mean you are financially sound, secure, or stable. That just means you have a high amount of debt and you're making your minimum of monthly payments. But me personally, that is not a way I want to live. I think debt is slavery and it's an incredible amount of stress. And money stresses can be one of the biggest source of strife in people's life and ruin relationships and just really eat years away off of you because of the weight it puts on you. And I just don't want that in my life. So when I paid off my last amount of debt in 2017, I vowed to never ever have debt again. And no matter what roadblocks or difficulties that come up in my life, I will not take out a loan or a credit card to work around them. I will find other ways of doing that. But so moving on back to my statement of the difference between bad credit and zero credit how did i get to zero credit again because you have to have a have active debt whether it's through a car loan or a student loan or a mortgage or your credit cards you have to have active debt and be paying it off regularly to get this magical unicorn score but because i had paid off my student loans that was the last amount of debt i had paid off my car a few years earlier and i had no active credit cards by the default of the system, I have no score because there is no debt that I'm paying on. And for me, because I have assets in my bank account and no debt to pay off, this feels far more secure and stable and stress-free than someone who has an 800 credit score but has active debt that they are paying off. And that is how I choose to live. But a lot of people have the misunderstanding that you cannot do things in life like lease apartments, lease cars, get a house, etc., without having this high credit score. And I am going to share with you today how I have navigated around that. So starting with credit history and credit score, those are two different things. You can still build credit in a way without having a credit card. And there's a few ways to do that. Uh, when I was younger and I hadn't had a job yet, my first credit accumulation was were my student loans, actually. I went to college and about half of my tuition was grants based on academic scholarship. The other half was uh, from FAFSA, which is like the Federal Loan Association in the United States. I did have a co-signer back then and my father co-signed on the loans, but again, you don't start paying loans till like later in years after college. Um, but I, my father co-signed on that. And then around that time I had my first car and I think my aunt was my co-signer on that. So starting out when you are young and you've never had a job and you have no money to your name, co-signing will probably be necessary. And of course, if I was blessed to have relatives to help me through that, but if you have no family or friends that are able to co-sign on loans when you are a young person, then yes, I understand in that circumstance that having a credit card might be necessary to start building your credit. But even in that case, you would want to have a job to be able to do that. Um, but in, that, in my case, that's how I initially started my credit history was I had my student loans and my first car in my name and then co-signed with my, my aunt and my father and just made the regular payments on that. And that's what starts building credit history because even after those things are paid off, they will actually stay on your record forever because the good old government love, likes to track us for everything. But 
in that case, it can work to your benefit. And then after that, when I graduated college and I was a free range adult, <clears throat> I did lease my first car completely in my name. And at that point, I still did not have a credit card because even though despite getting tons of credit card offers in the mail during college, it never felt right to me. I was just like, no, I don't want to be a part of that system. I will spend whatever money I have. And if I don't have the money, then I don't get to spend anything. <laughs> but um, so I my, out of my first for my first job in out of college, I did. I was moving to Las Vegas and I went to my lease on my old car was up and I wanted a new car because I was oh, I'm an adult now. I leased it completely in my name and without having that a credit card at all. I did have a small minutia credit score from the, the student loan in the previous car that I was co-signed on. And so that allowed me in combination with my promissory note from my new job, I was offered a contract with a salary in it. So I showed that to the leasing company and that was used to prove that I have income coming in. And that's how I was able to lease the car in my name 100% without a co-signer. I did have a slightly higher interest rate, actually not even slightly, I think it was a lot higher interest rate, but this is how you start out as an adult. Um, but I was able to get it signed completely in my name. So then that was able to build my credit history even further. And then when I moved to Las Vegas and rented my first apartment, it was the same thing. I showed my promissory note, my contract from my new job showing what my salary would be. And then I had the small credit history from my student loans and the previous car, so that was able to lease that apartment 100% in my name without having a co-signer. Fast forward a couple years, I one I that car I, that I was leasing was had a lot of problems and they I wanted to finance my own car instead of wasting money on a lease. So I did that. I was able to finance that car again because the other one was previously in my, in my name and while I was leasing it, I was making my payments all the time always on time every single month. So that was building my credit history as well. And one other thing that people don't often realize is that when you are leasing an apartment, not every single apartment, but you can sometimes opt into having that reported to the credit system as well to show that, yes, I have this lease, these lease payments in my name and I'm making them on time every single month. So that can be helpful. So when it came down to finance my car, still I did not have a credit card but I was starting to build my credit history. So I was able to finance that car completely in my name. And then when I did something at that point in my, uh, was just turning in my mind that of, yes, it's good that I have this car, but I got started to get really freaked out about debt. I had that and then I was out of college for a few years now and student loans were looming. And I was just looking at the world around me and hearing just, different thing learning how much debt that people can be in and it just started to weigh on me of i don't want any part of the system i don't want to be a slave to monetary payments and always be stressed out about money so i made it a really strong goal to pay off that car quickly which i did i started attacking the principal rather i just kept making my monthly payments on time but then i would save money by cutting corners and not spending my money on other stupid shit and I would just pay down the principal and I was able to take my five year finance car term of my car and pay it off in actually 13 or uh, yeah, no, 23 months. So just under two years. And that was a huge relief. That was back in 2013, it's now 2024. I still have the same car, it's an Austin Volkswagen Beetle. And I've not had a car payment in 11 years and that has been awesome, but certainly paying off that car did uh, really good things for my credit history because when you pay off a massive loan and you do it quickly, that will add to your credibility, so to speak. And a couple years after that, or four years after that, I was in LA and I was working two jobs and then I wanted to really tackle my student loans. So I started doing the same thing. I kept making my minimum monthly payments and then just attacked the principal when I had a chunk of money saved. And eventually in 2017, I called them and said, I want to make my final payment. And the woman was kind of shocked because they're now, even in my uh, approaching 40, I have many peers that have just all of their student loans left still because it's such a difficult thing to be able to pay off. But when I did pay it off, it felt amazing. And that was, I forget which month, it was maybe September or something, 2017. And I made a very strong vow to myself to never get into debt again. And I firmly live by that. So 
that was the last time I had debt. And upon paying that, my credit score went from, I think it was actually good by that point. Cause I was just, I had my student loans in my car for a while and was paying those always on time. And I had a good score, but when I paid those off, that took my score to zero. And I have now been part of, if anyone knows Dave, Dave Ramsey out there, it's called the zero credit club. I have been a proud member of the zero credit club since 2017, and I will continue to operate with zero credit. So moving forward into now, how do I operate with zero credit? Because I used to have minimal credit. I just leased an apartment here in San Diego. The rent is 2,300. That is not cheap. And San Diego has been named one of the most expensive cities in America. And by all accounts, the worst housing market in America. So 2,300 for a one bedroom is not cheap. And I was just able to rent that with no co-signer. And I've not had a co-signer since for anything since college. And I was able to rent that with my zero credit score. And in the years prior, other uh, apartments that I've had in San Diego, I have also rented with my zero credit. So how do I do this? Well, there are three things that you use. You use your W-2s or your pay stubs from work to show that I make money. Or if you're starting a new job, that permissory note of contract uh, like I used to have, but I have, I'm currently employed, so I use my W-2s that say, look, I have money, I can afford this. The second thing you use is the credit history, which is everything I just talked about. So when they run your credit report, it doesn't just say, oh, she's a big fat zero, she can't rent. It shows your entire history. So all of my student loans, all of those previous cars, various apartments that I have rented, they will all show up on there. So it shows, okay, the score is zero right now, but there's this is where the interpretation comes in. Then, okay, all these things were paid and it shows, your history shows that they were, nothing was um, in arrears and all the payments were made on time and then they were paid off. So that credit history will work to your advantage as well. And then the third thing you use are your assets. I show my bank statements that show I have, you know, a couple years worth of rent in there. And the reason I've been able to save so much money is by living outside of the debt zone and also working multiple jobs and living the minimalist lifestyle that I live. I spend money just on the bare essentials and some travel here and there. So that has allowed my assets to accumulate in a way that is advantageous to me. So when I rented, I just showed, again, W-2 pay stubs or a contract note, your credit history, which they will run your credit when they're looking for that credit score, the zero will show up, but all of your history is there as well. And then your bank account assets. So this is how I rent with a zero score. And it has not been a problem for me up to date, and I don't anticipate it being a problem there. A lot of people think it's different when you buy a home, but there is something you can do when you buy a home called underwriting, which it's the same process. You It does require, I believe, a lawyer for a small fee, but they essentially go through your bank account assets and your credit history, then similar thing where they just present your case of, okay, the score is zero, but the ability to manage money is actually phenomenal. So that is what you are lobbying for. And for my case, I am nowhere near being able to buy a home. The median home price in San Diego is a million dollars. Don't have that. I'm financially secure, but I'm not a millionaire and I wouldn't want to buy a home in the modern system anyway. I wanna build like a yurt off grid or a cabin off grid, but we're not there yet. So for now, renting with my zero credit is not a problem at all. And I just want to put that out there because especially for young people, I don't believe in shoulds or this is not even my advice because at the end of the day, it's your fucking life. You need to do whatever you want. But I do want to dispel some myths out there because a lot of young people get into a lot of trouble with credit cards. And a lot of people, even my age, just operate with one or multiple ones because they think they need it. And they think they need this mythical, like awesome credit score to that to just validate themselves in the world and be able to do things. But I have leased cars and bought cars and leased very, very expensive apartments all without having a credit score. And I'm just here to tell you, it is not necessary to have that credit score and living without debt is a wonderful thing that has brought lifted so much stress out of my life. And I would I encourage people to delve into that if they are curious. And maybe if you are someone who has trouble uh, overspending on your credit cards, which is a lot, a lot of people, 
to encourage you to pay down that debt and cut it up and say, never again, I don't need to go back to that. Someone really awesome that gives really in-depth um, technical financial explanations of all this is Dave Ramsey. I am not affiliated with this channel other than I think he's awesome. Um, super like cool, like Southern Santa Claus gentleman type, but he gives really awesome explanations of the whole credit card system if you want to dive into that. And he is the founder of the Zero Credit Club. He helped me out a lot when I was sort of navigating how to get out of my last pieces of debt. And I've certainly heard many, 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 many layers of noise over the years of saying, you need, a credit, you need to build your credit and get that credit card. And I'm glad I listened to my intuition and stayed out of that system because at the end of the day, as I mentioned earlier, that credit card system is not there to help you. They can dangle other points and their cherries and carrots on a stick. But at the end of the day, they are there to use you to make money. And the way that they do that is by enticing you to get into more and more and more debt. But debt is just slavery. I want everyone to be free and to be experience as much freedom on this planet as they can. And being coming out of debt is certainly a step closer to that. And I would encourage you to look at your credit card spending habits. And even if you're getting points, go through your statements and look at everything you're buying and look at the just the weight of do I really need these things in my life and if you what would my life look like not seeing a credit card statement every month or multiple credit card statements every month I can tell you on my end it's pretty awesome and moving through life without a credit card or without a credit score now as I've had for the past seven years has given me nothing but relief and I will continue to go through life with my zero credit happily. Okay, so that's the rant for the day. The moral of the story, as Dave Ramsey would say, is cash is king. And so if you're interested in joining the Zero Credit Credit Club, again, I highly recommend checking out Dave Ramsey's channel. And if you are coming onto the cusp of adulthood and thinking you need to build your credit score to be able to lease cars or uh, apartments, um, I'm here to tell you that no, you do not need to do that. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.